Hey y'all, it's Stephen Van Campen Lewis, uh, and today I want to talk a little bit about um, catacetums in fall. As you know, it's it's uh, October first today, actually. So uh, a lot of your catacetums are probably thinking about going dormant, or maybe actually are going dormant. Um, if you're if you're kind of far north, you know, down here in, in South Texas, it's uh, it's still very hot. You know, it's a uh, 96 degrees today, uh, which is hot even for here uh, for this time of year, but. Um, a bunch of my catacetums are showing the first couple of leaves that are slowly going yellow and then I have a bunch of bloom spikes. So that's that's sort of the, the beginning of the, the sort of dormancy season uh, for me here. And some of your, your plants at home probably look similar or uh, are maybe in a more advanced stage of dormancy or, or at least preparing for dormancy. So what I want to do is show you a couple things that um, to watch out for. You know, one of the more common questions this time of year is, hey, should I stop watering? And then they, uh, the, the person, you know, posting uh, to social media is, is showing a plant that's very active in its uh, growth process still. So definitely not ready to, to withhold water. So I want to, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the signs um, that would help prevent those types of posts on social media asking, um, is my plant ready for dormancy yet or not? So, um, let's get the camera turned around and check out some spiking uh, catacetums. Okay, so back under the shade house, looking at the catacetums, and you can see spikes over there, a uh, spike right here. If you look way in the back, we've got some little spikes over there. You know, we're there on some first bloom seedlings and it start off with some really boring dying leaves. So this is a Cygnakes cooperi and this is the, the sort of initial stages that you'll see of your plants um, slowly going dormant. And then the next thing you'll see is these types of things where the, the larger leaves a little farther up will start to get yellow, um, start start getting ruddy looking. Uh, you'll see leaf tips on some of the farther up on the, the larger leaves starting to turn yellow and, and have streaks. So these are, these are the types of things that you look for um, to let you know that a plant is thinking about dormancy. And luckily right here next to me is a great example of why, uh, or excuse me, of what to look for when your plant is absolutely definitely not even thinking about going dormant. And what you see are these white lines here on the leaf axles. The brighter white or light green these are, uh, the less chance that you have uh, that your plant is, is starting to think about going dormant. So if you see these white lines, that means this plant is still in active growth. It is not time to withhold water. Whereas, if those lines have turned more of a green or even a closer to yellow color, you know, the, the real clear distinctive white lines on this one are gone. And then you can see it started dropping some lower leaves already. So this is a plant that is uh, at least starting to think about going dormant. And then of course, you can see on the Cygnakes cooperi, there's no lines there whatsoever. Unless I really zoom in and I have to look hard, um, but this is this is another one that is uh, likely going dormant already. And here's another one. This is Fong Sing. So these are still very bright white, or at least a very very pale light green, and you you can see that there really aren't a whole lot of leaves turning colors. You know, this one's got a little sun scald on it, uh, but that's it. However, uh, this is one of the more seasonal bloomers for me. This one really only blooms in the fall. And uh, so this is one that's, you know, getting towards the end of its growth cycle, of course. And it looks like I've got a bunch of female flowers getting ready to open. And you can see these little these little, they look like eggs on strings almost. The end of my fingertip there. 
Those are lacewing larvae, or excuse me, lacewing eggs. And lacewings are excellent killers of pests in the garden. So seeing those on your plants is a great sign, um, as are some of the native bees that you just saw buzzing around. Uh, luckily I do not have any of those uh, invasive European honeybees. Um, really, I just have a ton of these native bees and it's great. So, um, we took a look at the, the Fong Sing spikes here. Like I said, a bunch of females. I can tell that by the shape of the flowers. Uh, I actually got this one awarded on female flowers. So I know these are not just green hooded things. These are actually pretty attractive looking flowers. Uh, I have another one with female flowers. This is an interesting one. This is Sanguinium by Tabulari. And the male flowers are really bizarre looking. I'm hoping to get some on the other spike over there. Oh, that one's aborted for some reason. That's weird. I hadn't noticed that before, so not really sure what the reason is for it. But uh, I can see I'll still get some of these female flowers here. And this is this is a cross that has these just really intensely erect um, spikes. Uh, and not all of the catacetums, in fact most of the catacetums do not have that. Uh, a lot of them will... Um, They'll start up and then they'll kind of go pendant as the, the flowers get heavier. Or you'll have some of these, which are Catacetum denticulatum. This is the first bloom on this seedling. And these are entirely pendant. And hopefully, now that I get a closer look, not only do I have these flowers that'll open up, but maybe another spike over here. So that would be a really cool little overachieving plant. And then I have another denticulatum up here showing some very clear signs of going dormant with that lower bulb. Plus those white stripes are, they're starting to turn green. So this one is, is thinking about dormancy. And then of course the flower spike is, is indicative of fall in many species. This is an interesting one over here. This is Sanguinium by Tenebrosum. And it put a growth way down in the pot. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to see if this one ends up trying to bloom. I don't know if you can see it there through the glare. But it's uh, I'll probably have to cut the bottle here to let that growth out. Especially if it starts to bloom. And then down here. This is one of the plants I got from... Adam Driesword, it's Desmond Driesword, and it looks like I need to rewrite or create a new tag for this one, but look at this cluster here. It looks like these flowers are actually a tight little head of asparagus sprouts. Almost looks like I want to cook these on the grill and eat them. I suspect that's a bad idea though. Oh, I almost forgot. When Desmond sent me the plant that I just showed you, he sent a, an extra free Galliandra. And so this is a cross that he made called Galliandra Penny Lane. And I'll have to look up what the parents are because I, I don't know what, I don't know my Galliandras very well. In fact, this is the first one I've ever grown. So when I saw this inflorescence coming out and it had these dying bracts, I thought the whole thing was dying or almost dead. And then the the buds kept forming and it, everything was good. And it's this really interesting, not alba, because there's a little tiny bit of pink in the lip here, but it's sort of an almost alba. Maybe you can see the little bit of pink in this lip slightly more clearly. And then you can see there's more buds forming. And so this is a first bloom plant. And this particular one has some really interesting red coloration. Um, red striping there at the, the leaf margins, or, le or at least the leaf axle margins. And some really interesting spotting on the, on the bulb itself. And then of course these, these flowers are kind of cool. Really intensely keeled on the inside. I don't know if you can see the keels there. 
look like stripes. They're sort of raised stripes there in the throat. Let me see if I can zoom in. That actually looks pretty good. Gives you an idea of what's in there. And same with the, the flower below it. But yeah, so believe it or not, this is my first Galliandra. Uh, the one, first one I've ever grown, first one I've ever bloomed. Uh, and you know, I just don't, I don't see them very often, even though they're becoming more, more and more popular. And that's about it. A bunch of spikes, a few dying leaves, some cool pollinators, and that's about it for now. Some, some tips on how to, uh, accurately assess the, the dormancy stage of your, of your catacetums here in fall. Um, or if you're here in Texas, it's really just an extended summer. But I hope you all are having a great weekend, and I will talk to you later. Bye.